So let me start with what probably I should have said on Monday, but I cannot say, I couldn't say everything because um, there, was, uh, there was too much to say. So the first thing, which we never said, but I think it should be said at least once, is uh, what about completions? So if you start from a G, uh, discrete, uh, finitely generated group. So typically, you imagine that it's the, pi, the topological pi one of a, of a manifold, or po pro possibly the orbifold pi one of a fundamental group of, a, of an orbifold. Uh, what can you... Why, why do we, uh, I'll explain why we, you have to complete it by giving you many uh, rigidity statements for the discrete, uh, in the discrete setting. But then, you know, suppose you want to complete it. And then I explain why you want to complete it. Then there are two kinds of completion. One is, one kind is pro-finite and the other kind is pro-algebraic. But, when I say, when I write profinite, it doesn't mean what we usually call profinite. What we usually call profinite is the full profinite completion. Here, there are several profinite completions. So there's a profinite world and a pro algebraic world. So the profinite world is you take G, you take H, you take H in a finite index, so cofinite, and you take a limit. But then you can ask something. So if I ask that H, if I ask nothing, any H, then you have the full profinite completion, which is the one we usually use, which is the one which comes out if you, um, if you do the et al pi one. So et al pi one of, so if M, is well now you usually uh, denote it by x, but if x happens, if m happens to be turned into blah blah blah, uh, um, uh, let's say if m is actually over a field and then you over a field k, but it's actually a scheme and then it this is this is it. But and the remark is you get the exact same thing if you if you ask that H be uh, normal in G or that H be characteristic or people also say invariant in G. In G. Why do you get the exact same thing? Because I assume finitely generated. So if you're finitely generated, you have a finitely generated, you have a finite number of subgroups of, 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 of co-finite subgroup of, of a given index, and then uh, you can take the intersection. And so, as we say, uh, as one says, uh, these groups are co these subgroups are co-final. So you get the same thing. You can also ask for this to be, you can also ask that G uh, over H. So I take H, H, um, H normal in G and G over H nil potent. Uh, and then you get uh, G pro nil. And G pro nil is the, is the, um, is the, the, the pro nil potent completion of G. Now there is a, so G finite nil potent, okay? Because it's still co-finite. Uh, Sorry. Um, so, so you get this, and then there is a, a lemma or a theorem, which is refined silo theorem, which I would be hard put to prove. Is that if n is if n is finite nil potent. N is the, 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 the direct product of its p silos. There's a refined silo theorem. It's not very easy. 
Uh, it's a very good exercise. I, I wouldn't be able to do it. Um, so that means G is the product of of the p comp uh, sorry of its p completion of overall primes. Now on the pro on the pro algebraic setting or on the pro algebraic side, you first have G alg. And the bad thing is, what is G alg? Is you, you look at all all maps from G to an algebraic group, whatever. Or maybe you find you go to all uh, linear algebraic group. It's probably in, enough. Problem, it's just enormous. It's intractable. It's intractable, then maybe I'll recall a theorem, an old theorem by Tietz, which said that, maybe I, I just I say it in words, if, you're, if you take a reductive group and you take almost at random, say, it, you take two, two, two elements of an algebraic group, and then you take the free group, the group it generates, almost, sure, almost always it's Zariski dense in your group. So that means this is intractable, this is enormous. So what you have to do because the reductive part is enormous. You do a, a Levy decomposition, and you and you and this is why uh, this is why you what we what we actually are looking at here. You take unipotent algebraic groups. It's the same as taking this, the, the the representation into linear unipotent groups. So you take linear. Uh, linear, uh, linear, linear, unipotent algebraic groups. And that, that will uh, deliver the, the, the pro-unipotent completion. And this is what uh, we normally work with. I mean, everybody works with it because, simply because uh, the, this is too big. Now, there is a, a, an AMS book an AMS volume called Motives, which was published a long, long time ago and which with many, many wonderful papers. One of the papers is by Serre and it sort of explains that I can start from a profinite group, namely I can start from GQ. And in some sense, the motivic Galois group is the pro-algebraic completion of, the, of GQ, the motivic Galois group for for motives over Q, but it's big. It's too big. So I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, it's a beautiful paper. I mean, it's there, but uh, in some sense, if you put it this way, it's just too big. Okay. So, uh, so this is essentially why uh, we focus on this. Uh, and, and there is, of course, a tight, a tight, uh, I, I don't explain, but there's a tight uh, connection between the pronial potent, uh, pronial potent uh, version here on the profinite side, and the pro unipotent uh, version on the on the on this side. So we focus here on the full profinite, which we denote G hat, and uh, so full profinite and pro unipotent. Okay, so now. So maybe this should have been said on the first day. Uh, now, what happens is, um, so you have, so now let me be more, go back to our main subject, sort of. Uh, there are relative versions. Re there are relative versions of plus relative versions. Uh, yeah, pro L, pro L, or L, people like L. Relative versions means you have a finite quotient and you want to preserve the finite quotient as is. As is. Uh, because, by the way, if you have a, an exact sequence like this, maybe I should say two because I will use it. Uh, pro finite completion, this one, is a, a, a right exact functor. 
but it's not left exact. I always, I'll, I'll, I'll mention it. I mean, I will use it for, uh, uh, for these objects. So it's not, it's not uh, left exact. So this is true if uh, H and K are good. So good, I'm not going to, to, to define it. It's good in the sense of ser. So ser defined, ser has, it's not very good in at terminology. You know, contrary to Walter, he never has any idea how to name things. So I said, okay, these groups are good. And, uh, okay, so for instance, if K is finite, no, even if, if even it's enough that the quotient be good. If K is good, it's enough. Uh, so if the quotient, for instance, is finite, it's always true because the finite group is good. There is nothing to prove. If the quotient is free, it's always true too. So there, it's true, and, and profinite comple relative completions, which are like here, they, they come when, uh, when, when you take a finite group here, and so you keep it the way it is. So essentially, what you do is H, L, G, L, G, relative, and then you keep K the way it is. So you keep K quietly the way it is. Because otherwise, if you take the pro L completion of a finite group, you will kill a lot. You'll kill everything. All the elements whose order is not divide, divisible by L. So you kill too much. Anyway, let's go back to this. So you, you take a differentiable surface, which I call S. So uh, the usual thing is genus G and mark point, and it's hyperbolic. Okay. Now you have, as I recall, you have this, you have the Teichmüller space, you have the moduli space. Here I call, we call it, we often call it Teichmüller group. Uh, and uh, topology is also called mapping class groups, same thing. So this is, well, we also denote it TGN, MGN, gamma GN. Okay. And, uh, let me give you, why, why do we complete? Okay, the baby case, of course, baby case is that, of course, if you have Z and the invertible element, so it's totally babyish, uh, and the invertible are this, and then if you go to ZP, the invertible element, there are many. If you take the ring of polynomials, there are not many invertible elements, and there are many uh, invertible elements here. Okay, so it's a good reason to complete. No, it's not a good reason to complete. The real reason to complete is that algebraists are a bit dumb and they don't know about the exponential. So they don't have an exponential function in the sense that the, 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 in the sense that, uh, that the pi one of the plane of the complex plane minus one point is not Z, but Z hat in uh, algebraically speaking. No, they are very intelligent. <laughs> but, okay, so that's the baby part. Uh, now what, I'll, I'll give you some, i give you a, a very long, well, not very long, yeah, well, 10 almost. Tell uh, 10 properties uh, in, in uh, the discrete case, which tell you why we should complete. Uh, first, well, first in the sense, oh, and I'll explain uh, for a reason and assume, for simplicity, assume S generic. And when I say generic, it means it, means it contains uh, a subsurface, or there is a subsurface, sorry, yeah. this won't be very readable, of type 1, 3. Another way to say it is that I assume G is positive. Uh, what do I assume? And uh, D is, sorry, D, G, N is 3G minus 3 plus N. So D, D of S is, I, I write again, D, G, N is 3G minus 3 plus N. And it's the, the complex dimension of, MGN, 
of C. And uh, so I assume, what do I assume? I assume that the, this is bigger than three and, uh, and uh, or of type one. Thing. Well, it's, it's, that's nothing. I mean, it's, it's very useful for certain things, but here it's just to make simple, uh, simple statements. So the center is trivial. First thing, the center is trivial. There is no center. The, third, the second thing is more interesting. I mean, maybe more interesting. Second thing is the outer automorphism group is very small. There's Zemo 2, which you can imagine is Galois of C over R. I mean, it's, it's not, so it, it's just the, the flip, the, how do you call it? The, the complex conjugacy of the mirror symmetry. So, so this is small, very small. So um, they say that if I don't complete, there is no golden detachment group, okay? So this is a deep theorem. And uh, I don't know, it was proved, uh, I, I dare not put names because there are many names attached to it actually. And it was proved in the mid eighties. So it says that, so of course that, that is also true for braid groups, for instance, out, out BN equals uh, C mod two for N, for all N, I think, all N, all N, all N, well, all N, whatever N. Uh, so this is just a, an instance of this. Uh, so this is really important. It says that, well, the golden detachment group, it, it, you have to complete, otherwise nothing happens. The, the baby, of course, again, the baby analogy is this. Maybe here I should say that. I should say here that, of course, if the group happens to be nilpotent, or if G happens to be finite, for instance, it, no, not finite, commutative, then uh, there will be no difference between these things. And here the pro potent completion will be like an adelic completion, like the Z hat being the product of the ZP. Okay, so this is again the baby case here. Uh, so the, the, this would be, I mean, it's always true. And, and uh, this is what you would call the adelic completion in a way. Uh, okay, so you have this. Now, and you have more than this. I, I, I do not explain, but well, let me, yeah. I write, uh, uh, just to introduce the notation, let me write gamma lambda s, um, just uh, let's say, let's say cofinite. So again, cofinite means finite index. Cofinite uh, normal in gamma. So lambda is a barbaric notation for level, because uh, I don't know how to say level in Greek, and people usually use just lambda. So uh, what is true is something which is even stronger than this. And if, if you take out of any cofinite normal subgroup, then it's simply, uh, or, or alt of any Finite normal subgroup. All the automorphisms are induced by, uh, by, by gamma, by the inner conjugacy in gamma. Okay, so I, I don't write it, but it's. it's oh, no. It, everybody calls it level, but it just means this. Nothing more. Nothing more. It's exactly this. Um, now, the third thing is out gamma s equal out star gamma s, uh, which you prove uh, on the way of to prove this. So what does this mean? It means that, well, in words, it means that also all the automorphisms of gamma are inertia preserving. Actually, you prove this before proving two, because if you have two, there is nothing to prove. So this is a preliminary to prove this. So, um, 
This is very important. So in, in, the, in, the, in the discrete situation, uh, well, this is, uh, maybe I'll, I'll just give a, an indication of how you prove this. Um, in, in the discrete situation, so what, what, is, what are the inertia subgroups? The inertia subgroups of gamma are given by uh, basically, well, I mean, exactly uh, the, 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 the conjugates of Dane twists. And uh, in, this is very important because this is what it, when you go to anabelian geometry, with it, with, this is what is called the local theory. You want, the first thing you want to prove, and the first thing that was proved by Neukirch, and then by Uchida, uh, or then, or independently by Uchida, and, all, and then by, uh, in anabelian geometry by Tamagawa and others, is that you, the, the, the automorphism will uh, preserve the inertia subgroups. We don't know how to prove this in the completed situation. I'll talk about it later. Then, oh, and then I have to introduce, so I have to introduce at least, uh, I have to introduce the, the, the complex, the, the simplicial complexes. So you have groups you complete the way you want. And then you have uh, here curve, you have all sorts of simplicial complexes. So what are these simplicial complexes? They're uh, there are three. I mean, I'm, I use three of these. There's a real maze of complexes which were introduced by various people, starting with Harvey uh, in, in 1980, as I, as I said very quickly yesterday after a conversation with Seth. Uh, this is the analog of buildings, but it's much more visual and much easier in a way. So this is simply... Uh, so the ver C of S has vertices, uh, simple closed curves. So C0, I forgot if I put it, C0 of S equals, sorry, equal simple closed curves, closed curves, which are uh, on S, that is maps, equal, let's say, C1 maps. Sorry, this C has nothing to do, of course, with this C. This C is C1. It's just a C1 injective maps from S1 to, to S. Sorry, this, this C has nothing to do with S, with this C, and this S has nothing to do with S. <laughs> That's a fact. So C1 is just Irregularity is dif differentiable, and of course, S1 is just the circle, <laughs> and S is the surface. Okay, uh, it's just traditional. So, the, the vertices are the simple closed curve, and the and the and the, 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 the sorry, the how do you call them? The simplices of uh, of um, dimension n or not n k are uh, sets of non-intersecting sets of k plus one, sorry, k plus one, non-intersecting simple closed curve. Maybe I, will, I won't say simple closed curve anymore, I will say curve. So, and also when you say a curve, it's really a curve. I mean, real dimension one. When you say curve, it's actually up to isotopy. When you say non-intersecting, it's really uh, that there are uh, representatives which do not intersect. And uh, or if you take uh, or if you take uh, a metric of curvature minus one, it means that the the, the unique uh, geodesic in the class of these curves do not intersect. Well, anyway, the long and the short is that. Uh, if I have a surface like this, maybe I put one like this. Well, this is uh, this, uh, and and uh, 
I didn't mention the, the obvious two. They are not uh, homotopic, so they're not equal, and they're not uh, bounding, and they're not, uh, they're not like this. I mean, they're not, they do not, uh, they're not homotopic to, 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 how do you say? Well, you see what I mean. So uh, this is, uh, for instance, a two simplex. Okay, so it was recognized that, in fact, and I, I'm not going, well, maybe I will, but I don't know. Uh, for the time being, I do not define this and this. Um, it, was long, it was recognized long ago that this is very useful. Some people, if you're a physicist, some people call it a coarse graining of Taj Mahal space. And that's what it is. Um, uh, you, you, you look at the fate of the curves, by looking at the fate of the curves, you can see a lot. So, four is that the automorphisms of C of S is equal to the automorphism of gamma of S. This is the analog of a famous theorem by Titz, which says the, the automorphism of a building, of a building are the automorphism of the group itself for reductive groups. Here you don't have many automorphisms because I told you that this you have this. So you don't have many automorphisms in the first place. But, but this is true. And when you complete, we don't have this. You don't have this because you have that this basically, I mean, if you remember, basically by contrast, out star of gamma hat of S is, G, is, well, is gamma. Um, so there's a big, big contrast here. You replace Z mod two by, this is the whole point. You replace Z mod two by something which might be the Gawa group. So you replace the Gawa group of C of R, which is Z mod two, by an enormous thing. You have to have the star because we don't know how to prove, we don't know how to prove uh, this. Um, so, so this is why you have to complete in a way. Um, oh yeah, I promised to show you uh, maybe at least a hint of how you prove this. How do you prove this? Wh what you have to do is to take, uh, it, it's exactly what Neukirch did for, it's exactly, no, it's not exactly, but it's a, a parallel of what Neukirch did in the arithmetic case. You have to characterize inertia subgroups. How do you characterize inertia subgroups? You have to characterize what are called multi-twists, which are power of twists, commuting powers of uh, twists. So if I have a, uh, sorry, I don't have much space here. If I have a power of, of twists, okay, have non-intersecting curves. So the TI is the twist over, in the Dane twist over gamma i, and the gamma i's are not intersecting. And here I put some powers. This is a multi-twist. So it's simply a product of, of non, of, 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 uh, of uh, well, you see what I mean, of powers of uh, commuting, commuting twists. Now, uh, now the, 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 the thing is, if I take the center of the center of, oh, sorry, the centralizer, the center, of the centralizer in gamma of uh, an element, uh, G, equal Z, if and only if uh, G is a multi-twist. So this is to show you that this is completely this is a key phrase in nanobillion geometry, group theoretic. It's group theoretic because you take the, your elements, you take the centralizer, you take the center of the centralizer, and, uh, well, and, and the centralizer is rarely Z, except if it's a multi-twist. Then that will characterize for you. We don't know how to do it at all in the, in the, in the completed case. But, but uh, some Japanese people, and I, I'm sorry, I've not really followed, uh, Moshi, Mochizuki, Hoshi Mochizuki, in, at least in genus zero, they've done it, uh, in genus zero, for, uh, in, in certain cases, but uh, I'm not, 
I, I cannot really tell. It's, it's, it's uh, rather recent. Uh, so, okay, so you have this, you have this. Um, what else? What else? Oh, yeah, then there's uh, the big, the, the, the famous theorem again, which I say again uh, very quickly. No, not quickly. Uh, so five. Well, five I skip because five, five is using this, is using uh, these, these complexes simply. Uh, five, six, six is, yes, well, maybe I skip five. Six is C of S has the homotopy type, type, type of a wedge of spheres, of a wedge of spheres. Uh, of dimension, um, of dimension. Uh, well, I mean, the dimension are, are, are known. The dimensions are known, but I'm not. I'm not. I'm not uh, uh, saying it. Maybe, for instance, I can tell you that the 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 homotopy dimension of S G when n equals zero is two G minus two. So it's minus the Euler characteristic for G larger than one. So that's uh, n, n equals zero and g larger than one. So this is extremely important because, well, first it was, it was uh, shown again by Hara and Ivanov uh, independently roughly in the mid 60s, in, sorry, mid 80s. And uh, it's very important. It was used in, by many people in many uh, for, for different purposes, including the Matson Weiss theorem, for instance, which is perhaps the best known case. But uh, here it was, I used it for uh, proving the two, the two level principle, the way it's phrased in the ISKI. Uh, now let's go to, let's come to, uh, let's come to, uh, uh, the congruent subgroup property. What is the con so? If you want to, if you want to study gamma, so uh, let me write gamma, gamma for gamma G n, which is gamma of S G n. Well, all these things, just to make it simpler. Um, so then you have gamma hat, and. Uh, you have another, I'll, I'll, I'll explain another completion, which is the uh, congruence completion. Congruence completion. So why is it useful? Completion. So what is the congruence completion? And, and there is a subjective map from one to the other. So the, the congruence completion is a priori uh, less fine than the, than, the, 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 than the full profinite completion. The big conjecture being that they are equal, that they are uh, actually, this, this map is an isomorphism. Um, so how do you, how do, I, I'm, 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 going, I def, I'm defining it. So you have pi one, Let's yeah. So again, very uh, so pi g pi equals pi g n equals pi one of g n s g n. Uh, this is just uh, just simpler, just to simplify notation, and these are almost traditional. So now gamma acts on pi one of g n. Because it acts because, as I said, pi one is oh, sorry, gamma is just pi zero of the diffeomorphism, so it acts by diffeomorphisms. So now let me take k, k, sorry, k, uh, an invariant subgroup. K, k, sorry, k, k in uh, G in pi, uh, cofinite invariant. 
So as I said, pi is finitely generated, and the cofinite and the invariant subgroups are uh, cofinal, okay? Because because it's finitely generated. So there is a map from gamma to alt, or let's say out, sorry, out pi over k. Because gamma, because it's invariant, because kappa is invariant, gamma acts on pi, it, la it leaves k uh, invariant. And so it, it, um, and so it induces a map like this. And gamma kappa, so it's the principle, gamma kappa is the, is the kernel of this. So gamma kappa is called uh, principle uh, congruent subgroup. So it's a, it's a nonlinear generalization of what you normally do in, uh, in, uh, with not only elliptic curve, but beyond that. I mean, when you, when you took things which are, uh, uh, when we take matrices which are the identity modulo n, here this is the analog, principal congruent subgroup. So then you define a congruent subgroup to be anything that contains this, it's cofinite and contains this. And gamma, and gamma checked is the limit over k of, of the gamma mod gamma kappa. No, no, no. For instance, the first thing you prove, well, it's not easy, is that for SL2Z, uh, well, we know that SL2Z hat is very different from SL2Z hat, but here SL2, SL2Z tesh, big check, is equal to SL2Z hat. So you don't lose anything. It's this. Oh, sorry. It's, um, yeah, because SL2 is gamma 1,1. One, one. So if you apply it to, oh, it's not SL2. It's, it's a little, well, okay, let, let's call it SL2. It doesn't matter. Maybe a little different. But. So this is a non, uh, uh, so what do I want to say? Yeah, and the, and the conjecture, uh, the, the, the CSP, uh, conjecture, conjecture, yes, sorry, uh, yeah, so uh, sorry, just, just to say, of course, there's a surjective map in, in the sense that the, this topology is, is less fine, so they are, more, they are a priori less congruent subgroup than they are cofinite subgroups, clearly, I mean, just by definition. So the, 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 so why, why is this conjecture very important? Is that because it basically says, uh, it basically says that the, the, the covers, the etal covers of your moduli space are actually derived from etal covers of your surface, which is much easier to, to study. And uh, there are a few instances of, uh, I, I could explain uh, a few, uh, some, uh, some cases where, where we actually uh, used it. Sorry, there was a question. Good, very good. <laughs> very good transition. <laughs> uh, exactly. So. So there is a map from gamma gn to uh, the automorphism group of pi gn. So this is called the universal monodromy map. Universal monodromy um, for, for a reason which is rather clear, and that is uh, uh, MGN classify all curves of type GN, and the universal monodromy is when you, when you, well, it's this. 
And uh, as Benjamin said, in the, in the discrete case, this is a, uh, uh, an isomorphism. But as I said, profinite completion is right exact, but it's not left exact. So the congruence, so the congruence conjecture is equivalent to this to this map, which exists, being injective. But we don't know. Um, I won't have time, but um, we, I, I can do many more things with the congruence uh, topology than, I, than we, I can do with the, with the, uh, with the full profinite topology. And so, yeah, gamma, gamma check is, is precisely this. Um, so, 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 so. Uh, yeah. So in the uh, so in the complete case, what do we know in the completed case? Well, this there's nothing to say here. We don't know. We just don't know. For instance, we don't know whether. For instance, typically, this we don't know. I mean, we don't know whether it's trivial or not. But we know that this is trivial. I should, uh, I should mention a name, which I will mention again. It's Marco Bolgi, for instance, for, for, this, uh, for this result, for instance. Oh, or maybe I will write gamma g, g larger than 3. Um, what do we, what don't we know? Uh, here, uh, here it's completely different, okay? because it's not rigid. Here we don't know. Here we don't know. That is, if you, if you out gamma, alt gamma equals alt star gamma, we don't know. Uh, we don't know, but there, 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 there's a lot of, uh, uh, okay, if I put it this way, it might sound like something, like an anecdote, but it's not. I mean, it's really important and it's, uh, the core of uh, anabelian geometry, in a way, that is proving that uh, you, you that uh, your maps preserve inertia groups, and so you can you can speak of uh, inertia groups. Uh, you can you can you work with inertia groups. Uh, what else? Uh, oh, and now now you could almost guess what we want to do. Uh, what well, we've done already, sorry. Remember that um, yesterday Leila explained with the, the Grotzen Dictatement of Lego, which to us, properly speaking, is how do you act with GT on, on, the, on the groupoid? So, what, what people usually do is you have a groupoid with a finite number of base points. Here, are the number of base points on the base points on M. The, the tangential base points on M, well, not quite the tangential base point, but let's say the, the, the base points are the points of maximal degenerate, degeneration in, on, uh, on, uh, yeah. On, uh, and the maximum, the point of maximal degeneration on M are simply this, the, are, you can put it another way, are the, uh, the, the simplices of maximal dimension of C of S. That is simply the maximal multi-curves. You, you, you just cut your surface into pants or uh, trinions or tripods, or, as uh, Mochizuki puts it. So these are the simplices of maximal dimension of this. Okay, and there is a finite number of them, and they are classified, and, and you can uh, they are classified in genus zero, for instance, by what I was uh, drawing yesterday, okay? The bracketing patterns, are, there are all sorts of translations in genus zero and in genus n, you can also see what, what they look like. But usually, so you have a finite number of 
base points. And then at every point, you have a copy of your group, uh, of your group gamma, because it's just a different base point. And the way you complete, because there is a finite number of base points, is simply you complete each group, you complete your group, and that's it, because there's a finite number of points. That's what we did <coughs> for P1 minus three points. You had six tangential base points, and you complete the group. But here you can do something different. And this, this was an idea of Marco, uh, which is really good. Because you see, you have this. And you complete this. And when you, once you've completed it, you, 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 you get your, uh, you get the golden dictatorial group. And oh, oh, surprise, you have the two level principle. But now, with hindsight, it's sort of obvious what you should do. You should complete this. So, so you should complete the, the and actually you complete other complexes as well, uh, simplicial complexes as well. The ones I, I wrote but did not define, I wrote down but did not define. Uh, C, C, P, the pants complex, and the, and this is a graph. This is a graph. For the, I, I think it's very important. I introduce it because you can prove results with this, but okay, I'm not going to talk about it. But if you have a simplicial complex with a group acting, and uh, a group acting on uh, a simplicial complex, well, let, let, let's, let's, take, let's take the case at hand because it's easier. Uh, so you have this, say, and then you define C hat of S to be the limit of uh, C of S mod gamma lambda for lambda, uh, lambda uh, level. So this requires care because, um, because, for instance, it's not true that gamma acts exactly simplicially, but it acts simplicially for lambda large enough. Let's say you have the levels. So you have uh, groups which are co-finite and which have increasing index, okay? So, uh, so uh, gamma lambda, so gamma lambda again is, uh, is co-finite and it's contained in lambda, in gamma. So you can complete this way. Um, maybe I should say that then, I could mention the name of Gerion Crick, who is uh, at Harvard and has a beautiful theory of uh, profinite homotopy theory. So that's another long story. Since Artin Maser, there was Artin Maser, there was uh, Morel, and then Gerion Crick, and <clears throat> he wrote a paper for, for, for us, in a way, for me, uh, some time ago about how to put this on a firm footing firm footing being model categories, model, Quillen's model categories. So all this is, um, all this is on, say, on, on a firm footing. Uh, but the long and the short is that still, this is uh, the, 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 the formula, how you complete it. Now everything changes again. So what you do is you, you go to groups, you're going for, to group from groups to uh, simplicial complexes. And quite often, there are just graphs. I mean, they're not graphs, but the, the, the complex is completely determined by uh, its one skeleton, by the graph. For instance, C of S is completely determined by its one skeleton. It's not difficult to see. So for instance, it's true that out of CS is the same as out of C1S. And it's still true that out alt of, sorry, no, it's not equal. It's still true that this is also equal to this. It, it, this is not difficult. But the thing is, this is essentially the Bolton detachment group. I, I'm, I'm teasing a teeny bit. Well, first I should write out. So, you, so the, what you have is on these complexes, which are 
when you com when you complete the complexes and you actually complete the 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 one skeleton is very often enough. Um, it's actually true for 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 the three for the three um, for these three. That is. Um, that is, um, C of S is entirely determined by one skeleton. This is entirely determined by one skeleton and this too. This is the one that Leila was talking about, which is two-dimensional. It's a pounce complex. It's two-dimensional and it's entirely determined by its uh, one skeleton. Um, so I want to have time to, to do more actually. Uh, let me stop here. Oh, just one more piece of daydreaming. It's not day, this is not daydreaming. Everything, well, I have to say it because of what is happening in Russia. I, I, I wrote a long paper. I, I, I sent it to St. Petersburg and it was February 2023, 22, end of February 2022. And two days after I sent it, uh, something broke, which is called the war. And now it's published. So it's, it's a long paper in uh, St. Petersburg, it, the paper where Drinfeld published his paper. Uh, and it says, well, okay, let's say, let's stop here. Now, I will finish with a little bit. Uh, so this is, so, and, and there are many, many, many things uh, which, uh, which uh, I'm, not, I'm not telling. Um, just a little bit of daydreaming. There's, uh, if I have, uh, I'll tell you what the goltonic tachmanov group really is, in a way. Um, if I have an automorphism of a surface, okay, so F, F, and I call it F, and it's no, it's not, uh, it's not quite by chance. So F is just an automorphism of my surface. Then there is a formula which, a very elementary formula, so gamma is a simple closed curve. So it's uh, inject again, gamma is C1, it's a simple closed curve. So it's given by a map injective from S1 to S. So the twist, so you have this formula, the twist along ga uh, gamma, uh, sorry, the twist along F of gamma, because F, okay, is given by this. Um, so this is a very elementary formula, um, which is very useful. Uh, let me see if I put it, I've put it right. I think so, hopefully. Uh, F, yeah. But imagine for a moment that you're in a different world and that you complete this formula. Namely, we, we've seen that X and Y, you know, at the very beginning, we had X and Y for P1 minus three points, but these are really twists. Here I have a twist, and here I have the action of F on, on the curve. But in a world which, is, which exists, actually, at least in the congruence case, where this is a... A, a, a twist or the analog of a twist for the congruence uh, for actually this, because you can also take the congruence uh, completion of this. This is what it is. And this is just the action of F on, uh, on a curve. And this is the Tachmara group. So in some and, and and you need to and you need for this to 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 uh, I mean for the thing to be coherent you need to satisfy the, the the four the three or actually four relations. But this, if you act with on this with this wait, with F, this is a pro curve whatever you call it. This is a, this is a vertex of this of this thing. This is really a vertex of this, and this is the the formula. This is a reason why Drinfeld should have put f minus one to the right rather than to the left, and he should have called lambda chi because of what we saw. 
And uh, so this is not quite daydreaming. This is almost true. What is a little bit of daydreaming is the connection with string topology. What is string topology? And then I'll stop here. String topology is, is not very difficult to, st I mean, the very start of string, string topology is you take these things you call uh, the, if you have M, which is a manifold, just M. Um, and what people denote by LM are the free loops on M. Free loop simply means that there is no base point. And so they are just the, the map from S1 to M. I'll inject C1 injective maps from S1 to M. So this is a free loop, okay? And now what uh, Schaas and Sullivan did is they, they put a, pro, they put a, a product on the homology of this thing. So here there's a Schaas Sullivan, so called Schaas Sullivan product, which is above, which lies above. So you have a, a map from here to here, which just the base, just one point, just an evaluation map. And here you have a intersection product. So here, here I forgot, here I didn't tell you, but I forgot about lambda. I put lambda equals one or chi equals one. So I, 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 I forgot about the commutativity. So I said, okay, let, let's put chi equals one. So it's the same as putting chi equals one. But here, here there is a theorem which is not easy but which, which assume that M is simply connected. So it's exactly what we don't want. We don't want this because we are interested in K pi ones. And then this is isomorphic to the Hochschild cohomology of M. So this is a, a deep thing by uh, Jones and I remember, I don't remember. And this maps the schwarz sullivan product to the, uh, to the, to the cup product. And this map, but here you have an action of S1. The action of S1 is trivial. I mean, it's, it's obvious. It's, it's just S1 to S1. It's just uh, turning. And the action of S1 maps to co the cons operator in Hochschild cohomology, which is the same as basically cyclic cohomology. And you can daydream that what you're doing is exactly the same. You're doing the exact same thing where... The, the action of, of on S1 has been replaced by, by uh, the commutative, uh, the, sorry, the, 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 the deformation of commutativity by chi, by, by, by GM. Okay? So, well, I stop here. Uh, this is tantalizing, and this is something I'm, I'm looking at at the moment. Thank you. <laughs> it's about the, the quotient of... Uh... First of all, this uh, C star of S you didn't explain. So CP is pants. Oh, CP, I will explain in. Uh, this is pants. Sorry? This is pants. Pants is composition, yeah. yeah. C of S you explained. Uh, C star, I did not explain, but it's easy. Uh, it's, well, I'll explain in private. I mean, it's very okay. easy. Okay, great. And then. Uh, okay. And you can complete everything and every, there's an action. Oh, yeah, and there's this complex, Gawa, you, you didn't explain the maps connecting, so I think it's uh, the uh, operation of the raising curves, yes? Operation of? Or raising curves, so because it's complex, you don't, uh, this uh, sets are not related. You, you, in principle, you need simplicial maps. Uh, these three are not immediately related, no. Uh, I mean, yes, they, they're all in terms of curves. Of simple cost. No, I mean the different level, C0, C1, so because... Oh, no, this, this these were the skeleton. Yeah. No, they are related. They are just... And the skeleton... Uh, I and mean, what it's is a, a K, plus, of... K plus 1 non intersecting curve give, uh, give you a simplex. That's it. So uh, means, of the dimension K. So you, you mean to relate uh, phase operations and so on? So you need uh, to relate... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's just so deleting a curve and adding a curve. Yeah, 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 it's very simple. Okay. 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 Thank you for coming. <laughs>